so we're here in Portland at the Kai Kershaw Zero Tolerance Factory. This place is amazing, and I have with us Pat O'Donnell, who is sales manager for Kershaw and Zero Tolerance. Thanks for joining us out Andy, here, man. Yeah, thanks for coming. Glad to have you guys. First off, you know this is one of my pet brands. <laughs> Actually, two of my pet brands. Fell in love with Kershaw straight away when I came to Smokey 20 years ago. Drifted over as soon as I held a ZT. I'm all about it. Tell us what's going on with Kershaw right now. Tell us what's going on with ZT right now. Well, we got a lot of happening. So in ZT, you know, we got some new stuff coming out. We got some new frame, titanium frame locks coming out, flippers, lots of KVT, um, lots of exotic materials, keep the carbon fiber coming, uh, lots of fun stuff, keep the ball bearings rolling. It's gonna be good stuff coming out in the future. From Kershaw, and we have the copper natrix coming out here soon. Right. The bare knuckle will be coming out here in just about a month or so, fingers crossed. The bare knuckle will be coming in automatics. Automatics has been really big for the nice. factory right now. We have all our automatics right now. We have a few more planned for 2019. Keep the, keep the auto excitement going as more and more states become legal. The business right. continues to drive. Right. And so we've had to kind of alter our factory here a little bit because of the increased demand for automatics. So we are absolutely standing on the factory floor right we are. now. We're in the part, there are some laser cutting machines that are not working behind me right now that should be, we would love to see them working, <laughs> but they're off at the moment. But there are tons of people working just around the corner right here. Talk to us about how many people work here in this factory. Yeah, so in the United States factory, we have about 400 employees right now, okay. uh, a little over 400. We have our facility right here, our offices that are connected to it, which also employ our houseware side of the business. Um, inside the USA factory, we only manufacture Kershaw Zero Tolerance products though. So, 400 people out there, about how many products are we are we making it a week? It varies by, a, if, if, a by the month, it varies by the month and you know, cause you know, some months are slower than others, but on average, you know, we're pumping out 100,000 plus USA wow. Kershaws a, a month. Wow. Um, and that, you know, when you count import products to go out the door, there's hundreds of thousands of knives leaving the door. So what you're telling month. me is business is good. Business is good, knife business is booming. Speed safe knives are more popular than ever. Nice. Um, they're really appealing to everybody, and so that business continues to thrive for us. So we are actually standing right in the middle of the factory floor, are we not? We are, we're right here. That's awesome. Uh, you know, laser cutters over here, around the corner, there are just tons of people on tons of machines. Yeah, we got everything out in the front. We got our grinders, our CNC's, assembly, everything. Nice, how many people are out there? Out there right now in the factory, you're probably, there's probably about 150 people out there right now. We run a couple shifts with about a total of 400 employees that work in the factory wow. and the other building. So how many products are you turning out a month? So the months, it varies depending on the month uh, greatly because some months are slower than others. But on average, I'd say we're pumping out over 100,000 Kershaws a month with uh, imports as well. And wow. so it, it can get uh, pretty high numbers every month when you throw in the imports. So that's a good question. What is the mix for Kershaw? Is, uh, for Kershaw alone, what is the mix between import and USA made? So in Kershaw alone, it's probably, it's about 45% USA Kershaw, about 55% imported Kershaw. Um, we would like to do more USA, we would love to. We're just kind of at uh, capacity restrictions currently. Unfortunately, right. United States, there's a finite amount of space here. And so we only have so many machines and so many people. So as you said to me before we started this, he has to take away something to add something. Yeah, basically. essentially from a USA Kershaw standpoint, if I want to add a new USA Kershaw, right. I have to take away a USA Kershaw. Uh. And that's not always a one-to-one -one trade because right. if you're removing a knife, it's usually due to poor sales. Right. And so to replace it, hopefully the knife you're replacing it with it sells better than the one you're discontinuing. Right. Uh, so you, you, you can run into capacity restraints very quickly, especially when you throw in zero tolerance right. products which are built on the same factory floor. So there can be a lot of bottlenecks there as well. Right. So out here, you're doing everything from uh, cutting out of the large steel patterns, you're cutting the patterns, you're assembling the knives, you're doing the sharpening, you're doing all the quality control. All of that happens right here. And then you have another facility as well, right? Yeah, we have our Logi House building down the street, about two blocks down the street. It's our big warehouse. We run our entire raw materials and finished goods are stored there. All the shipping's done out of there, receiving marketing and our R&D department is there okay. as well, and QC. Nice, very, very nice. So when you walk around out there, what is your favorite thing to see going on? What uh, is the coolest thing in your eyes? You know, the robotics are always fun to watch. Yeah. I think the robotics are the most interesting. It's neat to see something that, a big machine that moves like a human. Right. Uh, they have very human-like movements to see, you know, perfect grinds on things, or just doing even a swedge. And I'll show you guys a robot out there that's probably just doing a back swedge on a leak, and it just grabs the blade and does a quick little touch. And it's very, just little things like that you see that, Little aesthetic touches that you have a robot right. do, and then the hand sharpening. It's really neat to see a bunch of people out there. When somebody's expert at that, it's just it's it's, unreal. It's very difficult to do. I am terrible at it myself, so when you get these people that are very good at it, right. it takes a lot of skill to hand sharpen. Right. You know, there's 
There's some variances in there, of course, but the consistency is incredible that they're able to achieve when, the, when you consider the amount of knives they're sharpening a month. Well, Pat, I know you always take care of us, but we appreciate you taking time out of your very busy day to show us around this factory, and I absolutely Andy, thank you, love sir. being here.